Good morning. This is Pastor Tim Wells, pastor of Cross of Christ Lutheran Church in Aurora, Nebraska. And I want to welcome you to worship for Sunday, June 13th, 2021. Now, you might be watching this video and might be thinking, this doesn't look like our regular pre-recorded services. And you're right. Our goal has been for some time now to move from pre-recorded services to live stream services. Uh, the pre-recorded services uh, take a whole lot of work and a whole lot of formatting and we're trying to transition from just recording our regular service and letting you be a part of that instead of doing all the pre-recorded things. I've been told that we are hopefully just a couple weeks away from being able to finally live stream. Until that point, we're still doing pre-recorded services. And I'm asking you, uh, I guess for a little bit of forgiveness, it's better to ask for forgiveness than for permission sometimes. Um, asking for, for your understanding in doing something a little bit simpler for these pre-recorded services for the next two weeks until we're finally ready to live stream. And so what we'll do is I'll just record here sitting in my office on my laptop and I'll share our readings for the Sunday, I'll share a message, I will have a blessing and we'll keep the service simple but we'll still receive God's word together. So let's begin and we begin in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading for the Sunday is from Ezekiel chapter 17, verses 22 through 24. We read, Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar and will set it out. I will break off from the topmost of its young twigs a tender one, and I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel will I plant it, that it may bear branches and produce fruit and become a noble cedar. And under it will dwell every kind of bird. In the shade of its branches birds of every sort will nest. And all the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree and make high the low tree. Dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I am the Lord, I have spoken, and I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now our epistle reading for this Sunday from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1-10. through 10. Paul writes, We know that if the tent, which is our earthly home, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling, if indeed by putting it on we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the reading from the Gospel. The Gospel according to Mark, the fourth chapter, beginning with the 26th verse. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows, he knows not how. 
The earth produces by itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. And he said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when sown on the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples, he explained everything. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Having heard our readings for the Sunday, I now ask that you would pray with me. Lord God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations, may the thoughts of all of our hearts, all of our minds be pleasing in your sight. Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It is great to be back from vacation. It's been a while since we've had a recorded service online. That's because I've been gone for the last three Sundays. Family, we were traveling those two weeks in between, doing quite a bit of traveling. Uh, first, we went down to Arizona, took the family to see the Grand Canyon, did a bit of a road trip, and then got back home for a couple days and went back up north to South Dakota to see Shonda's parents and celebrate their 40th anniversary. Did a lot of traveling during those two weeks and in our travels, spent quite a bit of time in hotel rooms. We of course spent the nights in our hotel rooms sleeping there, but there were also times during the day when we'd stay in the rooms. When you're traveling, there are a number of reasons why you might choose to stay inside your rooms. For one thing, maybe you're just plain tired. You've done a lot of traveling, you've seen and done a lot of things, and now you need a break. That was the case for us about midway through our Grand Canyon trip. We needed just to take an afternoon and lay on the beds, take a nap, have some downtime, get some rest. Another reason you might choose to stay in your room is the weather. Maybe there's a real bad storm outside, and so you choose to stay inside your room until the storm passes. Then another reason maybe is there's some other kind of danger lurking outside and it's safer to stay inside. So this last Monday, it was our last morning of our time up in South Dakota. We we're getting ready to come back home. Girls were just getting out of bed and just getting ready. And I took our dog for a walk. We have an eight month old Basset Hound. He's a stubborn little dog, but good dog. And it was more him taking me for a walk than it was me taking him for a walk. We were exploring the parking lot, saying hi to everyone who was packing their vehicles, getting ready to leave. We were exploring bushes, exploring the grass. We're having a good walk. Then I decided I needed to look down. I don't know why. I just had the strange inclination I needed to look down. And right in front of my feet, and I was wearing sandals, there was a baby rattlesnake sunning itself. It was a baby. Still hadn't developed its full rattle. But it was very much a rattlesnake. And it was lying there flicking its tongue, so I very much knew it was alive. Now, this snake, it wasn't coiled up, wasn't in a defensive position, so I really wasn't afraid. In fact, I stayed for a while just to admire it, but then I got to thinking, I have an eight-month-old basset hound, a hunting dog, and who knows what he's going to choose to do when he notices this snake, and I don't want to take any chances with that. So I backed the dog up, went the other way, went right back up, uh, the stairs and inside our hotel room. Sometimes it's dangerous outside. 
Sometimes it's safer to stay inside. We know what's inside. We have control, or at least we have more control, over what comes inside. We can trust what's inside. I think that's how it often is with ourselves. It's easier for us to trust what's inside of us than to trust what's outside of us. So let's say you've been working on a project and you have poured a whole lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this project. You've given it your all, and so far the project's going exactly the way you want it to go. Well, then someone takes notice, and they admire what you're doing, and then they offer to help you with it. How do you respond to that? I mean, this is generous. They're respecting what you're doing, and they're offering their help. How do you respond? Well, if you're like me, maybe what you say is thanks, but no thanks. I'm good. I can handle this on my own. In fact, I prefer to handle this on my own. Why? Let's be honest, because I trust myself. I trust what I'm doing more than I trust you. And I especially have this issue when it comes to my gardens, my plants, my fish tanks and other animals, especially the, the new tank I have in my office here at church. I follow a strict routine and maintenance schedule with that tank. And there's all kinds of things I've got to do to keep that tank running and staying healthy. It's a big saltwater reef tank. And I'll admit, it's hard for me to trust that anyone else could do enough good enough job caring for that tank while I'm gone. Now, I obviously had to ask someone to help me while I was gone. I was gone a long time. I asked Logan, one of the youth in our congregation, to help, and he did a fantastic job. I knew he would do a great job. Was it completely the way I would do it? No. Were there a few things I needed to change or fix when I got back? Yeah, but nothing was destroyed. It was good. He did a great job. But still, I have to admit, the entire time I was gone, I was anxious and couldn't wait to get back so that I could take control and do everything myself exactly the way I knew it needed to happen. It's easier for us to trust what's inside of us, our thoughts, our feelings, our memories, our experiences, our knowledge. It's easier to trust what's inside of us than to trust what's outside of us. So now let's take that idea and apply it to our faith and our salvation. I'm the pastor of a Lutheran church, so most of my audience, I don't think anyone's going to say that they've earned God's forgiveness through their works. We all know we're saved by grace through faith, faith in Christ. And yet, I would suggest, especially in American Christianity, that we are all guilty at times in some way, shape, or form of trying to claim some role in our salvation. Again, why? Because it's easier for us to trust what's inside of us than to trust what's outside of us. And so we talk about being saved by grace through faith, but then we make faith something that we do. Think about all the words we use to describe faith. We talk about belief. We talk about obedience. We talk about choices and decisions. I'm saved by grace through faith often means I'm saved because I believe, because I have chosen to follow Jesus, because I have given my life to Christ. This is a big issue in American Christianity. We have this huge misunderstanding about what faith is. We make it about our belief, our decisions, our choices. Now, Jesus is still in the conversation. We still say we trust Jesus as our savior, but ultimately 
When faith becomes something that comes from inside of us, something that we do, ultimately we're trusting in ourselves, in our knowledge, our understanding, our decision, our choice for our salvation. Because again, it's easier for us to trust what's inside of us than to trust what's outside of us. Here's the thing, though. The truth is, we actually need to be much more concerned with what's inside than what's outside. So in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, and this isn't one of the readings I shared with you earlier, uh, we will talk about those readings in a moment, but this reading helps us in this conversation. There's a group of Pharisees that comes up to Jesus and they have a complaint. Jesus' disciples are not following Jewish rabbinical laws. They are eating with unwashed hands. And according to Jewish rabbinical law, that makes the disciples unclean. That makes them sinful. The Pharisees are concerned about what's outside when it comes to sin. But Jesus says, the problem's not on the outside. The problem's on the inside. He says it's not what goes into the mouth, what comes from outside and into the mouth, that makes one defiled, that makes one unclean. But what comes out of the mouth? And later he says, for what comes out of the mouth comes from the heart. And from the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, theft, sexual immorality, slander. These are the things that defile a person. According to Jesus, the problem, it's not on the outside. It's on the inside. Our hearts are filled with sin. And so we cannot rely on or trust what's on the inside. We can't rely on our thoughts, our understanding, our decisions, our choices. Instead, we must rely on what, on who, is outside of us. We must rely on Christ. Going back to our trip, we stayed in a lot of hotel rooms. Some of those rooms were nice. Some of those rooms were not so nice. But in the end, it wasn't the quality of the room that mattered. We did not go on vacation so that we could stay in our rooms all day. If that's what we wanted to do, we could have stayed home, saved some money, and been a lot more comfortable. We didn't go on vacation because of what was inside the hotel rooms. We went on vacation because of what was outside. The beauty, the real beauty, it's not inside. It's outside. Let's talk about faith. Faith is not something we do. It's not something that comes from inside of us. In the bulletin that we'll have here at church, I printed on the front uh, the Latin phrase that's often used uh, in theological speak to talk about faith. Faith is described as being extra nos. That's Latin for outside of us. Faith is not something we do. It does not come from within. It comes from without. And that's what we have in our readings today. In our gospel reading, Jesus gives us two parables about the kingdom of God. In the first parable, it talks about a farmer who sows seed. He scatters seed, plants the seed. But he doesn't make the seed grow. He can scatter seed all he wants, but he can't make it grow. God's the one who makes it grow. God does that work. Then Jesus talks about a mustard seed. It's the smallest of garden seeds, he says. 
but then when it grows it becomes the largest of garden plants so large that birds are able to perch in its branches and who makes that happen it's not the farmer god does that and then going to our first reading from the book of ezekiel god says he's going to pluck a sprig a tiny branch from a tall lofty cedar tree he's going to plant that that tall or not tall sorry that tiny branch on top of a mountain then make it grow until it also is a tall lofty cedar tree and god's the one who's going to do it he says multiple times in that reading i myself will do it and here we're talking about faith faith is not something that we do faith does not come from inside of us faith is something that god does god creates faith and gives it to us as a free gift that's what faith is it's something that comes from outside of us a gift of god which is why we emphasize worship not as something that we do but as a place where we go to receive what god has given for it's through the hearing of god's word through the receiving of the sacraments that the holy spirit comes and creates faith in our hearts so that we might know jesus believe in him trust him follow him serve him obey him be saved by him none of those things are going to happen if we simply look inside ourselves and it's up to us to do it instead we look to jesus and then we come outside of our homes and come to the place where jesus promises to be in his word in baptism in with and under the bread and wine where two or more are gathered in his name we come to worship to receive the gifts that only jesus can provide as children of god we know that we cannot trust in ourselves we can't trust in our own thoughts our own decisions our own choices instead through faith we trust jesus who once was outside of us. We were down here, he was up in heaven. But then Jesus came inside, came into our world, came into our flesh, so that he might die on the cross and save us from our sins. And now having saved us from our sins, Jesus calls us to come outside, to come out of our sin, to sit at his feet where the true beauty is, and to receive his love, his grace, his mercy, his forgiveness, and his life. Amen. Let's go ahead and bow our heads. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his face, shine on you, and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. That will conclude our service for this morning. I pray God's blessings on the rest of your week. Again, pray and ask for your patience. A little bit of a different format for our pre-recorded services, but God willing, we will be offering the full service again soon once we switch to live streaming. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.